Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This is the first lesson of the new unit, the circulatory system. So this is all about the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. Those are the three major parts. We will uh, formally introduce those in a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we've got the little heart lifting weights. The little heart in your body does a lot of work. It's very, very important that you take care of it, that you exercise it. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of reasons why and a lot of detail about the heart and how it beats, why it, uh, why it can still work uh, in certain situations, uh, what hurts it. So we are going to go into some great detail here. Uh, first, we'll talk about the functions of the circulatory system. So the reason you have blood, the heart, and all your vessels is to facilitate gas exchange, get oxygen to your cells and CO2 away from them. You need to deliver nutrients to your cells, all the food that you eat um, and all the energy that you ingest needs to work somewhere. Uh, it picks up cellular waste and delivers them uh, to the kidneys to be um, excreted. It helps with temp temperature regulation. As you know, if uh, some area of your body is cut off from blood, it will get cold. We've all wrapped a rubber band around our finger and it's got purple and cold. Uh, so blood helps with temperature regulation. It also delivers messages or hormones all around our body. So it's very, very important for a lot of different things. Here are the three parts officially. Number one is the blood, and we're gonna talk about the blood for the first four lessons approximately uh, in this unit. Then we're going to ha talk about the blood vessels. I should say um, second is the blood vessels, but we'll talk about those later. And third is the heart, and we're gonna talk about that in detail. So the blood, these are classic red blood cells. Uh, these are the blood vessels that travel all around, all around your body. And then you have a picture of the heart. We are going to see many, many pictures of these. Uh, and we're going to talk about all of these different pieces, the aorta, uh, the pulmonary, veins and arteries, the atriums and the ventricles. We're going to talk about all of it. But for today, we have lesson one, the components of the blood, part one. So the blood, uh, an average human has five or six liters of blood, which is approximately 8% of your weight. That is, was shocking to me kind of when I saw that uh, percentage. Uh, but I guess Liquids are very heavy, so that makes sense. Five to six liters is quite a lot. Uh, so the functions of the blood, as we talked about a little bit, it transports all of those things that we discussed uh, for functions, oxygen, CO2, waste, nutrients, heat, hormones. It's involved in uh, pH and temperature regulation. It has white blood cells in it, which we're gonna talk about in this lesson, which defend against um, any kind of foreign invader. And it also uh, has clotting agents, which prevent blood loss. In particular, it has platelets, but it has other things as well, which we will get into. So um, the blood has these three different solid parts in it. So blood is composed of um, two different way parts, essentially. We can categorize it in two different ways. There's the fluid part, which is the plasma part. And then there's the formed elements, which is essentially all those uh, chunks that we were talking about. So red blood cells, which we call erythrocytes, white blood cells, which we call leukocytes, and sometimes there's a K there. See, there's a K in my key points, actually. So double check which one's right. Uh, not sure, obviously. Um, we have the platelets, which is involved in clotting, and then there's other components that float around in there as well. So formed elements are the solid portions, and then plasma is the fluid part of your blood. It is essentially water um, mixed with a few other things. So those are the two parts. When we spin our blood in a centrifuge, and you can check that out in the YouTube video above, when we, we take the blood and we spin it really, really fast, all of the heavy parts go to the bottom. And it separates like this. So 50% of, or sorry, 55% of the blood is plasma, or essentially liquid. It's yellow, uh, it's kind of thick because there are a few other things in it, uh, like clotting factors and others, but it, it um, is mostly uh, the water portion and it is lightest, so it comes out on top. In this 
center portion, this white strip, we have white blood cells and platelets. So uh, that makes up about 1% of the blood. And then 45% or again, really 44% of the blood is red blood cells and they are the heaviest and they come out on the bottom. Uh, so that is, watch the video, you can see how they do it to make this, but these are why, this is why you, you hear you can save three lives with one blood donation because you can split this into three different portions. The plasma can be used for something, the red blood cells can be used for something, and the white blood cells and platelets can be used for something. So three different ways you can save a life right there. So number one, the blood plasma. It is yellowish. It is thick fluid. Uh, it, it makes up 55% of the blood volume, as we know. And as I mentioned, it consists mostly of water, but includes proteins, dissolved food, so all the nutrients, that's all dissolved and very, very, very tiny, enzymes, vitamins, hormones, antibodies, which we will get into more detail about what those are, waste products, and just a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna ask you to list this. Um, I'm going to ask you what mostly is blood plasma made up of um, water and maybe one other thing let's say proteins or antibodies or vitamins or nutrients anything like that would work but don't remember all of those that would be cumbersome so the yellowish part in this diagram here that is the blood plasma the red blood cells are pretty obvious same with the white blood cells and then the platelets are these little spiky things so that is number one uh, for the parts Number two, we have the erythrocytes, and again, that was 44 to 45% of the blood cells in the bottom here. So we have red blood cells are erythrocytes. They are little red discs. Uh, there are 25 trillion in the adult human body, so that is a lot. And every second, you produce about 10 million new red blood cells, which means you lose about 10 million red blood cells. They get filtered out uh, in your liver and in your kidneys. Uh, and if they are in your liver, I think they can get um, broken down and eventually in some way, not directly, reused. It's like a very intricate type of recycling. Uh, these red blood cells are formed in the bone, bone marrow, which is inside some of your densest bones, often your hips and your femurs. Uh, and they have a lifespan of about 120 days, but can die earlier or slightly later than that. Um, they can die as early as 10 days if they are unhealthy. Uh, red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the bloodstream. So their job is to move oxygen from the lungs all the way to the other parts of your body, obviously pumped by your heart. Um, this oxygen attaches to proteins in the blood cell called hemoglobin. So um, we are going to uh, go into detail about a little bit about what hemoglobin is soon. Uh, they are concave in shape. Essentially, they are indented discs on both sides. Uh, that gives this them a large surface area and they can um, transport more oxygen that way. It also makes them flexible so they can bend and squeeze through tiny capillaries. So they are like rubber discs, literally, uh, bouncing around in your blood cells. <clears throat> So a red blood cell has a whole bunch of these in them, and this is um, hemoglobin. So I know it looks all complicated, but just know that red blood cells have hemoglobin in it, and then they have iron. So hemoglobin has iron, and the red color and metal taste is due to the presence of the protein hemoglobin, which contains iron. You can see here, an iron here, an iron here, an iron here. So that's why if you uh, lose a tooth or if you bite your lip and you taste blood it might taste like metal uh, that's because there's iron in your blood and that is a key component of hemoglobin so oxygen latches onto this hemoglobin and then the red blood cells can transport it all throughout your body where it can then be released so you have about enough iron in your blood to make a one inch nail it's kind of strange to put it that way um, but maybe that's why the blood is so heavy uh, another component of blood is the leukocytes, which are white blood cells. So they're about 1% of blood, most probably less than that. Uh, and they are quite large, but not very numerous. So erythrocytes, there's tons of them. White blood cells, not so much. There's a very consistent count per amount of blood that you have. 
They are irregularly shaped. Here's a whole bunch of different types of them that fight different types of foreign invaders. Uh, so they look strange uh, and they contain a center or a nucleus um, and that contains information needed to uh, dissolve the foreign invaders uh, that they encounter. So these cells can live between 12 hours to several years. It depends when they encounter a foreign invader and when they need to uh, attack that because they often die in the attempt. And their main function is to protect the body from foreign material like bacteria or viruses by engulfing them by phagocytosis. Uh, phagocytosis is essentially uh, wrapping around them, eating them, and then dissolving them. And this process can often kill the white blood cells and they need to be cleared by your kidneys or again by your liver, uh, sometimes by your spleen as well. Uh, so these are very, very important um, cells. They uh, protect you and when there are a lot of them, it kind of signals that something is not quite right with your body. Uh, bone marrow is where all of these things are produced, erythrocytes and leukocytes. So what I would like you to do is check out these two videos, they're in your booklet as well, uh, about bone marrow and a bone marrow transplant, what it looks like. Uh, the needle is a little bit large, but it has the potential to save a life, so definitely worth it. Check those out. And now we're going to talk about conditioning. So um, when someone has leukemia, uh, that is a cancer of the blood. So often um, what happens is they need a bone marrow transplant because that is what is producing the faulty blood cells. So to get a bone marrow transplant, they need to be conditioned. So conditioning is getting a patient ready for a bone marrow transplant. This might include chemotherapy, radiations, and other treatments that could be experimental. And the whole idea is to um, kill the immune system uh, take it down so that you can uh, essentially implant a new immune system and a new uh, red blood cell factory into this patient. So doctors need to kill all the cancerous cells and suppress your immune system before a bone marrow transplant. That's what conditioning is all about. Um, so leukemia is cancer of the blood of the cells that make up our blood and the important pieces of your blood don't function properly anymore. Uh, the your job portion is all about leukemia. So there's a research sheet that's next. I'd like you to look into that, um, answer the questions. And if you have any questions for me, uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thanks very much for watching everyone. Uh, and I will see you in class.